Okay, I'll finally talk about overclocking my RX 6800 XT. I'm getting all sorts of comments about this, and this will also serve as a kind of overclocking guide specifically for AMD GPUs, although a lot of the same principles apply to pretty much any GPU. Although I will be using the Radeon software here to do it. And can I just comment that switching to AMD, I really like their software. So this is... It's almost like it's a combination of everything that NVIDIA puts into both GeForce Experience and their control panel, but it also, like, I mean, it puts it in one place and it has better overclocking features. And I'll show you how to get here. So you open up your Radeon software, just right click your desktop and click on it is one way to get there. Also Alt-R when you're like in a game or something is the hotkey. Uh, you wanna go to your performance tab and then you wanna use the subheadings here and go to tuning and Right now I have it set to default. My GPU has a factory overclock, which is the default. So it's already overclocked beyond the, you know, stock specs of a reference model. Now there is some, um, how should I put it? Auto overclocking abilities in here. You can go to undervolting and you'll get this scary warning and it'll give you a number like, hey, you could probably do 1125. I can go way past that. And that's my main criti criticism of this um, auto overclocking. Like it's saying that, oh, you can probably push your, your uh, GPU clocks up to 2444. I can go way past that. You can overclock your VRAM. Okay. Ah, oh, my screen flashed black. I broke my computer. No, I didn't. It's going to pop back up for a second. I don't know if it flashes black in the video recording for you guys, but it went, it went black for me. But, but don't panic. Um, people worry if like overclocking can break your computer, and I guess maybe the chances aren't actually zero for that, but I I really don't think you're going to mess anything up. If you push it too hard, your computer might crash, and then you just, you know, worst thing that might happen is starting in safe mode or something like that. I, I think you'll be okay. Now, we're going to actually do manual tuning here. We're going to go to custom and change a bunch of things, but first, I want you to see the uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 running in the background here and see you know what kind of frame rate we're getting what kind of gpu temperatures we're at what kind of gpu clock rates we're at and then we can adjust them when you're overclocking it's a good idea to be running something demanding for your gpu so you can measure how things are changing as you go so when you open up the manual tuning you can uh open up something like gpu tuning right now everything's disabled so you have to enable it so if i want to do gpu tuning I'm also going to switch it to advanced controls. It, it does it as percentages here, but if you open the advanced controls, it actually shows you the frequency numbers and the voltage numbers, which I prefer to see, but you know, I guess you could do it from the percentages if you wanted to. Now, when you're like, well, what do I even do? Well, you want to make your max frequency go up. <laughs> and like realistically, if you're doing this from scratch, you would do it in small increments, maybe 10, 20, 30 at a time, I don't know. But um, I've already done this. And another thing you can do is look up online people with the same GPU and what kind of overclocks they got. And there's no guarantees you'll get the same numbers as them. Maybe yours can't overclock at all, although you, most people will get at least something out of it. I'm just gonna type in 2500 here because I know that I can do that. I can go past that as well. It's also beyond what the uh, auto overclocking suggested. And I'm gonna click apply. Now watch the game, right? In the game, Notice that my clock speeds did go up. They went past 2400. Ah, but then they came back down. Now they're trying to go back up a little bit. It's struggling to stay there. And, it, and I think that it's actually power limited here. And the re, a way that you could check that. So basically what I'm getting at here is, okay, well, what else do you do other than just turning this number up? Well, you could increase your power. Uh, I'm gonna do this and I think we might get a little better results here. We, it may or may not actually be needed, but you can slide this up and I don't think there's anything wrong with just sliding it all the way to the right. I think different cards might give you different um, options here. Mine goes up to a maximum of an extra 15% of power. Again, I'm gonna apply the changes. And I actually do think if you look at the megahertz on the um, clock speeds here, I think it's actually more consistently maintaining its clock speeds now right? 2460, it was bouncing below that consistently uh, before I turn this up. Watch, I'll turn it back down and let's see if it goes back down. So again, you're watching here, 2327, right? 2259, it, it had some issues losing, lo oh, well, I'm at minus 15%. Okay, well, let's go back to zero now. 
So I guess what I'm getting at here is, is the power that you give it does impact the clock speed. Okay, we're at like 2438, 2403, right? But when I slide that up, it's, it's better able to actually hold the clock speeds that I was giving it. Now, your card might not need the more power, right? But I don't think there's anything wrong with sliding this up because it doesn't mean it will always draw 15% more power. It just means it can if it needs to to try to hit the clock speeds you're asking it to. Okay, you'll also know that temperatures went up a little bit if you're watching up there in the top left. Oh, well, I guess they've got temperatures over here too. I just also am running MSI Afterburner to monitor it in <laughs> Red Dead Redemption 2. I guess it doesn't hurt to have even more information, right? <laughs> Um, so one thing you can do to try to pull the temperatures back down a bit, or at least uh, rein in your fan speeds if you want less noise, is you can undervolt. And sometimes this actually can count. Some people think you need to like crank up the voltage to get a, a better overclock. But on a lot of these Radeon cards, it seems like you'll actually thermal throttle if you start getting around 73, 74 degrees, and that limits your, your overclocking ability. And by pulling this down, you can actually... I'm going to go down to 1050, which is like 100 less or something like that. Uh, if it's using less voltage, it will run cooler. So that can either result in quieter fan noises or, and or lower temperatures, which can also mean you could push your clocks higher without thermal throttling. Now, if you go too low on the voltage, it'll just be unstable and crash. So... Um, I don't actually know which one's the, the better order to do this in. When I was actually getting my overclock locked in initially, I actually went down as low as I could on the voltage. I could get down around 1,000, but it wasn't always stable. So I'm just being conservative here at 1,050 for the purposes of the video because I don't want anything to crash while I'm recording and have to re-record. <laughs> um, now, the other thing you can overclock, by the way, I could be more aggressive here, but for now, let's just look at, okay, the other main thing you want to look at is your VRAM. And the first thing that uh, I want you to do is take a look at the memory timings. And I want you to look at the frame rate in Red Dead Redemption 2 right now, okay? It's what, 82, 83? Let's click it to fast timing and apply. And now we are at 83, 84, 85, 86, 85, 86. Notice we gained a couple frame rates in Red Dead Redemption 2 simply by increasing the memory timings. I was impressed at the amount of gain you get just from switching to fast timings in some games. So that is definitely worth switching on. I'm gonna go to advanced controls so we can actually see the frequencies. And I'm gonna go ahead and just crank this thing because I've tried that before and I know it works. Again, I recommend slower increases if you're, if you're doing this for the first time. I just don't want this video to drag on and on and on by showing you the entire process. All right, so we've got our frequencies cranked up. We've got our uh, fast timing on the RAM. We've bumped up the clock speed. We bumped up the power. We've undervolted it. So it's doing all this cooler than it would if it was at um, the maximum voltages. Great. You could also play around with fan tunings. I'm not really going to cover that in this video because I feel like this is more of a personal preference thing. If you want to, you can get really aggressive on your, your fan speeds and you can adjust uh, some fan curves and things like that. So at certain temperatures, you can adjust at what point you want the fan speeds to crank up to 100%. And this really depends on your personal preferences of noise levels versus temperatures and how aggressive you want to get on that. So I don't know, if you're going to be playing the game with headphones on, maybe just you know crank the fan speeds and you can get a little more frame rate. Now, just for funsies, let's let's push this a little bit harder. I don't want to be too too uh, borderline here. I'll actually type it in. Let's try 2600, and I think that's stable enough that I'll even risk uh, erasing my entire video by this crashing, because I'm pretty sure this is still stable. All right, and now check out the frame rate in Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm bouncing around, what, 88 frames per second, 87, 88, 89, just depends, you know, things fluctuate. But again, was all of this worth it? I could go back to default and watch the frame rates in the game. Okay, it's sitting at 90. Let's click on default. And we're back down to 82, 83. So it's not like this is buying yourself a brand new GPU, but that's also a noticeable performance gain. And I'm actually doing it at less energy usage because I actually undervolted when I did this. 
And I could be more aggressive on all of this. And you can also set it game by game. Because that, the last thing I want to leave you with is what I just did here is not enough to determine if this is a stable overclock. You need to stress test this in a variety of games that you play. Uh, maybe if you have any benchmarking tools, you can run some of those. AMD even has a built-in stress tester that you can run. And if any of those things crash, then you don't have a fully stable overclock. Although it's really nice that, check this out, this was setting a global tuning setting, but in the Radeon software, you can add a custom tuning profile for different games. So if I knew that this overclock was stable in Red Dead Redemption 2, but it crashed in other games, I could actually just set this for Red Dead Redemption 2 so that only this game uses that profile. Because maybe other games are either unstable or I just don't need the extra frame rate, so I don't want my fan speeds uh, going up loud or something like that. Overall, I'm very impressed both by the overclocking ability of my 6800 and its undervolting ability to rein in the temperatures and I'm really impressed with the Radeon software because, again, this is just the performance tab on their uh, wider range of features. By the way, this video is being recorded right now um, on their uh, little recording thing here. So <laughs> I'm doing that as well. So I really like the software, cool overclocking stuff. And um, hopefully this uh, answered most of your questions. And by the way, if you guys are wondering if you watched my channel for a while, yeah, this is still running on my 650 watt um, uh, power supply. And it's able to handle this, clo this thing clocking up um, past 2600 megahertz. So anyway, pretty cool stuff. And I hope all of you have an excellent day.